Hi, my name is Jesper Kjärnbrink, chairman of Green Jade Games, Party Play, Seago and Internet Vikings. All gaming related companies. Uh, it's fantastic to be here from Sweden, uh, this really chilly Friday in December, introducing another industry leading iGaming Next event. I will spend the coming 10-ish minutes uh, sharing the trends I see from my different positions. Let's start with the big industry accelerator uh, the last year, COVID-19. And there are discussions on, on, especially on the stock exchange uh, forums, about the vaccine. How will the vaccine affect the iGaming industry? In my opinion, mm, very little. The hype in casino growth we saw in the beginning of the pandemic was nothing but a faster offline to online transition. And I think it's super important to remember that the underlying growth we have in this industry is coming from a natural transformation from offline to online. And with lockdowns and changed entertainment patterns due to COVID, this transition has just been accelerated. So when a vaccine comes and bring, bring things back to normal, I also see that we will go back to a normal growth pattern but with a larger customer base than we had before. So in this industry, as always, if we could focus more on retention, we will be super fine. Another clear and more scary trend is overregulating, like we see in Sweden and Germany right now, and perhaps also in the UK. We don't know that yet, but there's some risk. Uh, this I would say that this is a combination of us, the industry, having been too short-sighted in how we market our businesses, and politicians really not understanding the dynamics of gaming. And, 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 and for me, this is, this is a, big, ah, a, a big problem. I mean, if you look at this from a, from a larger perspective, the number of problematic gamblers are not larger today than it was 20 years ago, despite a brutally different gaming market. And we also know that gaming companies have has never been better on, on responsible gaming than today. And still authorities think they need to overregulate. There's no logic behind this. And, and, and I mean, we lack the logic and still politicians jump on the wagon because it looks good. And this scares me in a way that, that more might think this is the way to go. So I'm, I'm actually a bit afraid that, that we will see a trend of overregulating coming for, the, for this year and perhaps even a bit into 2022. At the same time, this is met by another trend that has been ongoing for quite some while. As I, as I talked about before, we have never been more responsible when it comes to, to caring for the players. And operators start to see responsible gaming as a business proposition, not only as something you have to do or have to do uh, to, to do the right thing. I, we, we start to see this as a part of a clever business. And I think we will see operators realizing that being safe and secure and, and offering a safe casino environment will actually beat bonuses any day, at least long term. Taking care of the players with increased responsible gaming effort and the society at large by moving towards zero carbon dioxide emissions with green hosting and, and sustainable traveling, etc., etc. I think that is the way forward. This is a trend operators has to adopt to, especially if they want to reach the younger demographics becoming customers. On this note, a micro-trend is created by the Privacy Shield Act, making the hosting with AWS and other US-based companies more complicated if you want to protect the integrity of, of your players. 
While pure European hosting solutions like Internet Viking or BMIT will grow, I think we will see a drop in, in the usage of, of non-European uh, hosting companies. And especially if the Europeans want, are offering green solutions, uh, smart cloud solu uh, solutions, etc., etc. And I think this is a, ha a trend that actually start, starts this year. Consolidation. I mean, this has almost stopped being a trend and, and turned into a commodity. Uh, and, and for me, this is totally natural. This industry is based on scale. The bigger you are, the more profitable you can become. Size also gives the opportunity to reduce risk, whether it's market or political risk. A large operator is also less dependent on whales or VIPs compared to the smaller, leading to a more relaxed marketing tonality, which in itself will improve the reputation of the business and the industry. So the industry logic is scale. And add to this the fact that the giant land-based casinos need to be more online driven and you have the perfect mix for consolidation. And when the operators grow, providers have to grow and vice versa. So if you consider career change, M&A in the gaming in space might be the place for you to go. Let's go to another trend. Uh, I call it the Netflix, the Netflix trend. Uh, and basically every operator are looking at Netflix. But only a few has understood what Netflix is really doing. I mean, look at this. Netflix is supported for films and TV shows. Operators are the same for games. Netflix have super smart algos for proposing what, what the next TV show I should look at. So as operators, when it comes to what, 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 what is the next game I should play. So what is the difference? It's content. A large part of Netflix success is their exclusive content. It started with House of Cards and since it has exploded. Operators doing the same? Mm, well, I can name a few uh, where 888 is one. But I think the most successful is actually uh, Siego in Denmark. 80% of their content is exclusive, made in-house. They're growing with approximately 20% per year and the EBITDA margin is close to 50%. So a coming trend, looking at this, I think a coming trend is probably operators investing more in content that make them stand out. And this leads me to the next trend. I think we are shifting from gaming to entertainment. And, and, and basically, this is nothing new at all. <laughs> the, the big casinos in Las Vegas has used this strategy for decades and, and rather successfully. But now we start to see it among more and more operators. But most importantly, among the game providers. I would say that evolution is leading the way with adding more and more entertainment layers on top of the game. Gameco, the US-based uh, company, has been doing the same, building arcade gambling games for the land-based casinos. Green Jade, of course, is doing the same uh, with their arcade skill games like Casino Blocks, Jade Puzzle or, or Candy Prize, B.I.G. These games are pure entertainment mixed with gambling. With operators needing to expand their customer bases, this is, this is a natural way to go. The more entertainment-focused games we are seeing today, I think those are the starting point of a new gaming area. We will have casino, we will have slots, absolutely. We will have casino, absolutely. We will have sportsbook, definitely. And I think we will have arcade skill games to attract a larger audience and to give more entertainment value to, to our players. Talking about games, I have to share my thoughts on slots. 
I love slots, and I mean, and they have never been better than they are today. But do we need 100 or even more new games every month? I don't think so. And, and here I actually think we will see a, a start of an anti-trend. Instead of operators taking every game just by default, we will see how more and more operators are going from being libraries, and, and we know how sexy those are, uh, to become curated gaming boutiques where players want to hang out. And, I mean, this is a bit like a cool coffee shop slash bookstore next to the big gray library. And my final trend. This is about Malta, the place where it all started. Will Malta be able to keep its position when more and more markets are regulating locally? I think so. I think the strength of an industry hub and an ecosystem with a lot of talent in the same place is much stronger than the initial reason to get a license. I mean, look at the tech industry. It didn't end up in Palo Alto because of there was some kind of tech license, but rather because this is where the talent is. But in this, Malta has a responsibility. Malta can't take this for granted. I, I think it's more important than ever that Malta really look at what they can do to support the iGaming industry, not this year or the next year, but for the coming 10 to 15 years. We are talking education, schooling for, for families, rent, prices, green electricity, reduced carbon dioxide consumption, etc., etc., etc. All these things that will matter for the industry the coming 10 to 15 years. And with this outlook, I wish you an, an interesting afternoon with iGaming Next this December Friday. See you.